Okay, so I actually have a bit of good news to open up with this week. And if your first thought when I said that was, well, then it must be international news, give yourself a gold star. Because this story is coming to us from Mexico, where the Supreme Court negated all federal criminal penalties for abortion last week. The ruling, rightly, declares those laws unconstitutional since they violate a pregnant person's right to themselves. Pretty fundamental when it comes to rights, really. It's worth noting, too, that abortion isn't the only fundamental human right Mexico is better at recognizing than America. See, Mexican citizens enjoy a right to health care, which means that their government is now required to provide abortion services to anybody who asks for them. Now, to be clear, there are still state laws prohibiting abortion in 20 of Mexico's 32 states. And while the Supreme Court is supreme, it'll apparently take a while to legally untangle all the implications of this and make abortion access truly universal in the country. But that is where they are headed. That is the exact opposite of where we're heading. So much so, in fact, that reproductive rights activists in Mexico are using us as a cautionary tale to all their supporters who think they've won the war at this point. See that? We're a cautionary tale. Isn't that nice? But enough about good news. It's time to talk about religion, a phenomenon that invariably leads to misogyny, regardless of the specifics of the faith. Because a religion begets power, and power, at least in the hands of men, invariably begets misogyny. Now allow me to add and dismiss the problematic not-all-men caveat on behalf of some wincing listeners. Because, of course, some men can have power and not use it to abuse women. And there are definitely ways of organizing power structures that protect people from abuse regardless of who holds that power. But that's not what religion does. It concentrates power in a small group, it establishes rigid hierarchies, and it diminishes accountability. And that is always a recipe for abuse. Case in point, the 30-year sentence just handed down to Danny Masterson of that 70s show fame. And kudos to the judge in that case, by the way, for giving him what I believe is the maximum possible sentence here, and not even asking about his swim times. But as you'll know, if you've followed this case on even a glancing at the headlines kind of way, this is just another story of religion empowering an abuser, then protecting that abuser with all the weight of their church. In this case, it was the Church of Scientology. But other than that, the story played out exactly the same way it always does. And speaking of empowering rapists, can I just take a second to say fuck Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis, Kurtwood Smith, Deborah Jo Rupp, Billy Baldwin, Giovanni Ribisi, and every other motherfucker in Hollywood who wrote this judge a letter asking for leniency for Masterson. You might have seen the stories about Kutcher and Kunis, co-stars of his on that 70s show, apologizing for the letters and assuring everyone that they'd never have written them if they knew they'd be made public. But to be clear, a bunch of motherfuckers wrote these glowing letters of praise for him after he was convicted of drugging and violently raping two women. So, no. Sorry, Ashton. Sorry, Mila. As much as I'd love to say that it doesn't matter because the court summarily dismisses the opinions of people who publicly brag about how infrequently they bathe, that's not the case. Letters like this matter. And the fact that y'all motherfuckers chose to rally around the rapist instead of the victims isn't something society should forgive you for. And with that off my chest, I suppose I can hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.